I hope Ms. Dalal will not mind my saying that I would have introduced the organizers by saying money is life and life is money. <laughs> we are gathered here today to release the 10th edition of Kanga and Palkiwala's Law and Practice of Income Tax. The first edition was in 1950 when Mr. Palkiwala was just 30 years old and five years at the bar. I do not know whether any other book which has become a locus classicus was written by a person aged 30. One would call this achievement similar to what Wolfgang Mozart achieved in music. And music was one of the things in which Mr. Palkiwala would have shown as a violinist if the mundane subject of tax had not occupied his time. The 10th edition, we call it the 10th edition, but we should remember that there were two supplements in between. edition and there were also reprints of the book on publication. Reprint in the same year which shows the popularity of the book. And I'm sure before 1915 comes there will be a reprint of the tenth edition. What was previously relegated to what was previously relegated to the additional cases in a part of the book has now been incorporated in the main edition itself, which gives you at one place all the cases on the subject, and you don't have to turn another part of One of the features of a book which is, is to give you food for thought, which is not to be just a companion of cases. One has to be forthright with his views, express them, and they may be right, they may be wrong.
Deposit with an electricity company by a factory for obtaining a power connection. The interest on that was held to be not derived from the factory. The factory could not have functioned without the electricity. But nevertheless, the deposit and the interest is not regarded as derived from the undertaking. What is remarkable is that his criticism is not confined to cases or decisions which are adverse to the SSC. He has roundly condemned the decision of the Supreme Court, which has been quoted so often today in Azadi Bachao and in Turquoise, where the Supreme Court gave a revolutionary meaning to the words may be taxed, appearing in the double taxation avoidance agreements. The Supreme Court said, if a power is given to a source country to tax the income, it means the resident country has given up its power to tax that. Mr. Data disagrees with that view. But let us remember that this view gives real meaning to avoidance of double tax as contrasted with relief from double tax and this decision as Mr. Datar has said is also condemned internationally but it is perhaps a matter for debate as to what will be the final fate of this subject. Also there are decisions which have been taken, Mr. Datar has dealt with them and has condemned certain views which have been taken. I would just invite your attention to pages 170, 1720 and 1740. I don't want to labor the point further because as was very eloquently stated, I have to say a few words. Let us also remember that in this Mr. Datar has stated that it is his intention to make the addition a triennial one. But please remember one thing. It's not worth listening. Uh, let us let us remember. Let us remember. And I hope Mr. Datar will keep that in mind that there must be a book release on 16th January 2020 because that will be the birth centenary of Mr. Palkiwa. <laughs> and if I may also advise Mr. Datar, please get a more competent book releaser. <laughs> so, there is one thing which I always think of when I think of Mr. N.A.P. That the English language is something fantastic. Really he was called N.A.P. Because he had, he had time only for a nap and never a good night's sleep because he was working always late into the early morning hours. As Longfellow said, the heights by great men reached and kept were not attained by sudden flight, but they, whilst their companions slept, were toiling upward in the night. And one thing which Mr. Palkiwala's life brings out is a contradiction in two philosophical thinking. One is that if you have the will, you will overcome all difficulties. The other is what is destined will happen to a bit contradictory. But Mr. Palkiwala's life illustrates both of them. In his early days, he had a stammer 
And can you imagine a person with a stammer becoming the most erudite advocate of a subject? He had writer's cramps, I think even later unto his life. Can you imagine a writer of books having writer's cramps? So that shows the will to overcome. And what is destiny? Mr. Palkiwala applied for a job as a lecturer in English. The post was given to a lady who had teaching experience. Mr. Palkiwala applied for joining the Indian Civil Service. He made the first attempt where he was not successful. The second attempt he could not complete because of a disease which had spread in New Delhi. But that shows you fate. Otherwise, if he had been selected as a lecturer, he might have ended up as the vice chancellor of the university. If he had joined the ICS, he may have, may have become the cabinet secretary. But therefore, what was destined has happened, and at that point of time there may have been some disappointment, but what God wills happens. So may I say this, it is the philosophy is, it is the will of a person which triumphs, but subject to God's will. There is, Mr. Palkiwala, apart from these I don't want to praise him, there is no need for praising him. There is, I've been told that I should speak on the present day tax practice and law. I can do no better than perhaps refer to the foreword by Mr. B. A. Palkiwala. Let me add that one of my big grouses and regrets in life is that he gave up his practice so soon. At the same time, we are all grateful because otherwise he would have dominated the profession. 